Alright, I just finished taking my first shot, so we're gonna look and see if we found it. There it is. There it is. Hello everyone, um, this might be a shorter video since I've got less gear that I'll be using tonight and a shorter night overall since I'll just be trying to go for Comet uh, Neowise. I downloaded Neowise and Stellarium so I'm coming more prepared this time in terms of where it's at, how bright it's going to be and about how bright the sun is going to be at different times so that's going to be a really nice tool to have. It's in the eastern horizon, I won't have a target that I'll be shooting before this so I can fully prepare and dedicate everything that leads up to it to shooting Comet Neowise. And I want to have two, maybe three cameras going tonight on that. I plan on having one on my Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro. Um, that one will have a longer focal length and I'll just get some longer exposures on it. I'll have a wider one, wider angle, uh, just fixed to a tripod, do, do a cool time lapse or something. And then I might have a third camera and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one yet, um, but it's going to be a fun night. Instead of having coffee, I figured I'll have some tea. It's a bunch of tea that I slowly pilfered from my dining hall this spring semester before they sent us home for spring break and we never went back. I'll sleep for a few hours and wake up at three or so and prepare. Then after I finish shooting Comet Neowise, I'll watch the sunrise and by that time I've got a disc golf game scheduled for 8 a.m. With, with someone, so I think it might be close to an all-nighter tonight, but I'll have like three or so hours of sleep, so it's better than nothing, so I can't complain. Here's an overview of the main actual imaging equipment that I'm going to be taking with me tonight. So at the top here, we've got my Nikon D3300 outfitted with a wide 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Got three batteries, because better safe than sorry. Okay, next we have my brother's Canon Rebel T7i, and then I have an EOS to Nikon adapter, and a longer focal length lens, I want to say that one goes 55 to 300 millimeter Nikon, two batteries on that guy. Finally, we've got the Nikon D7100, outfitted with a wider lens, I think it's 18 to 55, no, 18 to 140, sorry, with two batteries. This is going to be doing the, oh, like a wide field time lapse. This one is going to be actually on the sky tracker, and I'm going to squeeze off like several second long exposures to stack. This one I'm going to try taking some video with to capture the comet. So then, all the other main gear that I'll be taking. So we have three tripods, one for each camera. I've got some binoculars because it'd be cool to look at. We've got my Canon and my Nikon intervalometers, and we have the Ioptron Sky Tracker. So that's the main gear I'm taking tonight. Okay. It's, uh, it's about 3.56 or so. Car is packed up. So let's go to the YMCA now. <laughs> Just finished taking my first shot, so we're gonna look and see if we found it. There it is. There it is. There it is on the screen. It's time to optimize these settings real quick. So I just captured 10 uh, raw files uh, to stack. 
What I'm doing now is I'm shooting in JPEG. I know it's not the best idea, but I'm shooting a time lapse now um, while it's locked onto the comet. So it'll lock onto the comet, uh, and the background is going to get brighter and brighter as the sun gets closer and closer to rising. Uh, I'm trying to figure out these other cameras still a little bit, just messing around, see what I want to try to do with them. But I have what I came for at the minimum. So I'm, I'm satisfied with that, so now it's just time to get like the icing on the cake kind of stuff. So let's see what we can do. So the comet, you can, see, you can barely see it in that bottom right corner. It's starting to get washed out by this rising sun. So I might only be here for a few more minutes. The beautiful sunrise. It's about 5.43. Uh, we just finished up packing up the car. The sun's starting to get pretty high. It hasn't officially risen yet, but it's time to go home for a little bit uh, and pack the car. Probably sleep for a little bit. Maybe another hour. This is a message from future me. So it was clear three nights in a row. The first night uh, I was imaging the comet, and then the night after that it was really clear, but I didn't go outside. I, I did need to recover a little bit from pulling that first all-nighter. Uh, and then the night after that it was clear, so I decided to go out to my local dark sky park. Uh, it's called the John Glenn uh, Astronomy Park. And it's out in the middle of Hocking Hills, if there are any Ohio viewers on here. So I went down there, it was supposed to be really clear, and so I brought my full rig. I imaged, I took a little bit of data on the Eagle Nebula, only for about an hour or so. It's nothing I want to share just yet. And then I also brought my wide field stuff on my Ioptron SkyTracker Pro with my crop sensor Nikon D3300 and an 18mm lens. And I did some Milky Way shots, which it blew my mind. I could see the Milky Way naked eye just stretching from north to south. So that was two days after I shot the comet. So I'll, I'll include those pictures as well, uh, the pictures of the Milky Way. They turned out okay. I only ended up collecting about... 15, using 15 minutes worth of data for the final picture. Uh, I collected data for an hour, but I had to discard 45 minutes of it because some thin cirrus clouds rolled in and everybody at the park decided to leave around one or so in the morning. So that's kind of a shame. So I'm looking forward to trips there in the future. Here are the results from the comet and the Milky Way. <laughs>